So the news about Mueller was pretty much exactly what I expected and what I've been warning you about. And um, yes, now it's time for me to gloat and show you all of my old comments and um, show you how I've been right all along, despite the fact that I've gotten a tremendous amount of shit, even from people who are nominally on our side. So here's a compilation of what I said. He's not really afraid of the Russia investigation because they're not their central claim of like treason or collusion or conspiracy or whatever. That's not going to come through. And that's what I've been telling you from the beginning that that's not going to happen. When the event investigation originally launched, I said, you're not going to find treason. You're not going to find collusion. Um, that didn't happen. That's not going to be there. And it's honestly silly that. We're even having the conversation, never mind launching an investigation over it. Um, but the Mueller investigation became real as a heart attack when the articles started pouring in about how Mueller expanded it beyond the question of treason or collusion. And it just became an investigation into Donald Trump's financial dealings and his businesses. So generally speaking, I'd say I support what Robert Mueller is doing. But I support what Robert Mueller is doing because I think he can basically take out one by one Trump's cabinet on crimes like that. So, for example, what he's already done with Flynn, what he's already done with Manafort, like I support that stuff. And there's a, a lot of evidence uh, of the guilt of various actors in uh, Trump's administration. But I just think that the idea of Trump being Putin's puppet or Trump doing treason is basically a liberal pipe dream that's equivalent to democratic Benghazi because you're never going to get Trump on treason. You're never going to get Trump on being Putin's puppet, uh, nor do I actually think he is those things. The collusion stuff of like, oh, Donald Trump specifically working with uh, Russia. No, I mean, if that's the case, he wouldn't have had to announce the thing he wanted them to do in a press conference because he would have had a direct line to them. Instead, he was talking and shooting from the hip and saying, yeah, Russia, go get Hillary Clinton's deleted emails if you can. Please believe me. Unbelievable. And then they did it. So would you need to have this, you know, very open, very public pronouncement of that if you are like, Mwahaha, working behind the scenes with Russian intelligence operatives? No, you just tell them behind the scenes like, oh, here's what I want you to do. And I definitely don't want anybody to know that I'm telling you this. But here's what I want you to do. No, he said it in public. And uh, again, to me, I I'm a policy guy. So it always comes back to policy for me. And when you have Donald Trump arming Ukrainian rebels who are currently fighting Russia, when you have the U.S. permanently militarily occupying Syria, as we're doing right now. Remember, Syria is one of Putin's uh, top allies. When you have U.S. warships in the Black Sea right on Russia's border, as we do right now, when you have increasing sanctions as we've seen repeatedly from the White House. It's hard for me to look at that. Oh, and the other thing is he spent all last week ripping Germany because Germany has an oil deal with Russia and he was trying to blow up that oil deal so that the U.S. gets that oil deal with Germany. He was saying Germany's a puppet of Russia and the reason he was saying that, it wasn't projection like, no, I'm the puppet of Russia, so now I'm going to accuse Germany of being the puppet of Russia. No, he was accusing him of being a puppet of Russia because of their oil deal with Russia, and Trump wants that oil deal to come to the U.S. So if you're a puppet of that guy, then why would you try to blow up his business dealings and benefit your own business dealings? Because he's not a puppet of that guy. Trump is as corrupt as it gets. His The people around him are as corrupt as it gets. We, we have so many examples of this, whether it be money laundering, whether it be um working together with other governments saudi arabia israel but when it comes to russia the policies are simply not benefiting russia so it's hard to imagine him being a a puppet of russia they should do it because we need to find out if the president is working for us or working for a different country you're abandoning the money laundering thing you said though because originally you said well look this is really just about money laundering but now you just said like no we need to keep investigating to see if he's working for a foreign country now when i hear that i think that's really goofy and that's not what's happening he's not putin's puppet what this means is i think it's a total complete and utter pipe dream of corporate democrats to say oh you're gonna get trump on being some sort of manchurian candidate who did treason who like really a guy who literally 
was tweeting the other day threatening nuclear war, that guy is somehow under the thumb and being controlled by a nefarious foreign actor. I got news for you, not a single person on the fucking planet can control that madman. So, no, he's not Putin's puppet, he didn't do treason, you know, it, it's not, there, there's not a foreign agent who's in control of the United States at the moment. I think that's a, a corporate Democrat pipe dream where they get Trump on something like that. But what's real as a heart attack is, they can get him on financial crimes. I think every part of that was correct. And even the part about, oh, they can get him on financial crimes, again... There's another investigation happening in the Southern District of New York going into all of the things that I think are incredibly real. Tax evasion, bank fraud, uh, money laundering, stuff like that. And I, I, I've predicted, and I'll say it again, Donald Trump, when, the day he's no longer president, he will be indicted on a variety of financial crimes. So my first, the first prediction I made of they're not going to get Trump on collusion or treason or conspiracy or anything like that, that came true. The second prediction is the day Trump's no longer president, he will be indicted. Actually, I shouldn't be as hard on that in terms of, like, literally the first day. I should say within the first year of him stepping down, he will be indicted on financial crimes. There we go. Clarify on that front. Um, but this is not me showing you this. Yes, I am uh, bragging, and that's obvious. But it's more about not that I'm so great. It's that mainstream media is so bad. Because I don't find this hard to, like, this isn't difficult. If, you know, show this, um, show this compilation to Jimmy Dore, show it to Glenn Greenwald, and they'll be like, yeah, <laughs> duh. But it, the fact of the matter is, virtually all of CNN, virtually all of MSNBC, and many new media outlets too, we're really pushing this idea, the most extreme interpretation of, of this idea, that, no, Donald Trump colluded with the Russian government and he's effectively Vladimir Putin's puppet. When, again, just a basic review of the facts of the matter, immediately debunk that and disprove it. Like I said in, in one of the older clips that you saw there, Donald Trump armed Ukrainian rebels who are fighting Russia. Would Vladimir Putin want that to happen? Donald Trump uh, did a NATO buildup on Russia's border. Does Vladimir Putin want that to happen? Donald Trump sent U.S. warships to the Black Sea, right by Russia. Is that something Putin wants to happen? Donald Trump was pressuring Germany to axe the Russian oil deal because he wanted that oil deal to come to the U.S. Is that what Putin would want? Um, lose a tremendous amount of money in an oil deal? Why would his puppet try to tank his own oil deal? That's not something a puppet master would want his puppet to do. Uh, they... Donald Trump just pulled out of the nuclear treaty that we had with Russia. It was one of the crowning achievements of the end of the Cold War. Is that what Vladimir Putin wants? No. Donald Trump uh, is permanently occupying Syria, and he did escalation in Syria, even though he pretended like, oh, we're going to get out. He didn't do that. They escalated over there. So why would Vladimir Putin want his top geopolitical foe, the U.S., to permanently militarily occupy his ally? That's not what he wants. Look at the policy in Venezuela. We're trying to do regime change to get rid of Maduro. That's the opposite of what Vladimir Putin wants. So you can't say he's his puppet when the overwhelming majority of his policies in regards to Russia are against the interests of Russia. So it's... Again, this stuff was fucking obvious, man. And remember, this is coming from a guy who has repeatedly stated Donald Trump is a career criminal. Donald Trump is guilty of corruption. Donald Trump has done the bidding of the Israeli government and the Saudi government. Um, Donald Trump is guilty of money laundering and, and bank fraud and financial crimes out the wazoo. And, you know, there's so much to attack him on, but you gave him a giant political victory because you chose something that happens to be fundamentally untrue, and you put all your eggs in that basket, and now he gets to go around and say, It's a witch hunt! I told you it was a witch hunt! No collusion! No more indictments! Tremendous! And it just, this really goes to show you. With Donald Trump, People in mainstream media, they just lost their minds in regards to Trump. They lost their minds. It broke their ability to reason. <laughs> because they thought, I don't, I don't know, say anything you want against him, and I'll think it's just by default true, because he's so evil and bad that the most comical, comic book villain interpretation of events is the one that I'm going to go with, despite the fact that there's no evidence for it. Shouldn't have done it, man. Really, really, really shouldn't have done it. 
it's such a hilarious, ironic twist that the people who were focusing on this the most because they thought it'd get them their biggest anti-Trump win, they're actually the ones who helped Trump. And ironically, it's people like me and Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald, among others, who were accused of, why are you guys helping Trump? Why are you guys going soft on Trump? Our argument all along was, no, it's the opposite. The reason why we're telling you don't go with the most extreme interpretation of Russiagate, saying he did collusion and he's Putin's puppet, the reason we're telling you that is because it's not true and it's going to help him because it looks like there's now a giant media conspiracy against him and he gets to scream fake news and he gets to scream witch hunt and he gets to scream no collusion and he ends up being right about it. And meanwhile, the entire time you could have been screaming about how Donald Trump is, is a disaster who just deregulated Wall Street, which is going to lead to our next crash. He just did a tax cut where 83% of the benefits went to the top 1% over a decade. He just escalated in all of our uh, foreign wars where we're bombing eight countries and we're doing it right now. Um, he just uh, tried to push through a healthcare bill that had a fucking 12% approval rating. Three million people lost health care under his administration because of his anti-Obamacare executive orders. He's colluded with predatory payday uh, loan industry and made it so that they get to charge whatever they want. He dropped the cases against them. There were cases against the predatory payday loan industry because they're fucking liars and criminals. And he scrapped the cases and said, go ahead, you keep doing whatever you're doing and screwing people over. There's so much to attack him on, and none of that was brought up in mainstream media. None of it. All the focus was on, oh my God, he's Putin's puppet. And it just shows you how bad these people are at their jobs. They're objectively shitty, and now they're going to distract and deflect and obfuscate and downplay and act like, well, you see, um, I mean, still, it was still great. Like, we still nailed it. What? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Now, all the other uh, things that Mueller did, I told you I support, and I still support, of course, getting Flynn, getting Manafort. Uh, you know, the only one that I thought was weird as fuck was going after the Russian troll farm because that had next to no impressions and it really had no impact on anything. And they considered that Russian interference, which was just silly. It's just a troll farm for making money like any other fucking troll farm. But outside of that, yeah, everything Mueller did was, was fine. So the problem here is not Mueller. Uh, and the problem here, honestly, is not even... Democratic politicians that much because they didn't focus much on this. The problem is the fucking media. The media botched this from day one and kept botching it and kept digging their own grave. And every time somebody came along with a good faith criticism like Glenn Greenwald when he detailed all the exaggerations and lies and misleading things that people had said on this, they laughed at him and they scoffed at him and they treated him like he was a crazy person for basically just doing the bare minimum of journalistic integrity and saying, hey man, you guys are wrong about this, wrong about this, wrong about this. All the mistakes are in one direction. And it, that shouldn't be the case, and I'm here to correct you, and I'm here to say, hey, you got this wrong. But instead of, instead of taking that, digesting it, and course correcting, they double down, they triple down, and now they're going to fucking quadruple down. And there's going to be no reckoning here. Nobody's going to get fired. And it's going to be exactly, the fallout from this is going to be exactly like WMDs. 100%. You know, the intelligence agencies were wrong and led us into war, and the government lied, and the media went right along. And now we have... A, Two years of a narrative that was fundamentally untrue, and there's going to be no, nobody's going to be held accountable or anything. And people like me who got it right, none of us are going to be. Oh shit, this guy knows what he's talking about. Quick, get him in, give him an interview or something. Let's uh, let's hear him out. Let's see what he had to say. How the hell did you get this right when you're a lefty? And and the you know the Democratic side certainly in the media was all melting down and saying it's obviously true. How did you get this right? Well, they're not going to ask that question. They don't want to know the answer to that question because that would require integrity, something they don't have.